All right. So we are recording. Um, hello, everybody. If you're watching this in posterity, I'm Stephen Bailey. I'm here today with Brandon Scott. We're going to have just an um, a informational chat this morning instead of commuting to the office and, um, and just kind of see where it goes. Uh, Brandon, could you kind of introduce yourself? Good morning. Um, my name is Brandon Scott. I work for uh, Relation, which is a software company in the healthcare space. We do uh, patient engagement, uh, appointment reminders. If you've received appointment reminders from a hospital, there's a good chance they came from us. Um, I've been in the industry for two years now. Um, I'm the only data person for my company, and I do not have a, a typical background. I don't have any I don't have a computer science degree or any formal computer science training. So it's been interesting um, how and where I've ended up. Yeah. Is, so what is your formal title? My formal title at, at the office? I'm a data yeah, analyst. Data yeah. analyst. But you uh, function as the data man. Uh, yeah. Doing whatever. Yeah. What, <laughs> whatever Which, you, you know, up. as an analyst, most of <laughs> user story. Um, as an analyst, uh, most of my time is spent like, you know, just measuring, uh, you know, historical and real time stuff and attempting to focus on predictive and slowly getting into machine learning and stuff like that. So, yeah. Now, have you, are you functioning, uh, are you doing like the data pipelines and, and stuff as well as database management and, um, so and no, or? no, we have, we have, uh, DBAs, um, and we've got, you know, our, our engineering department is the largest department that we have. So we've got a lot of, you know, it, when I'm normally in the office, I've got a lot of computer scientists and, and developers and, and engineers hanging out around me. Um, so I don't do any of the DBA uh, work or pipeline work. Um, uh, we use Tableau for a lot of things. So Tableau currently is functioning for, you know, a lot of the, the pipelining, just importing data sets and having those refresh on certain schedules and then utilizing those to build dashboards. Yeah. Um, you and know, then you serve those people. dashboards on Tableau server and, yep. and executives or whoever needs to see them can just consume them there. Yeah. We've got like a third of the company that, that uses those at this point. Um, so can you talk a little bit about your background and kind of how you got into the data analyst role and um, what <sighs> drew you to it? So um, it wasn't, uh, anything that specific lured me lured me to it. So I have a Bachelor of Fine Arts in oil painting is my degree. Really? So is yeah. that your work on the background there? Yeah, it's a, an, an in-progress nice. painting at the moment. Um, so I was finishing up my degree um, and got tired of waiting tables for six years uh, and decided I had a friend that was working at this company and said that they needed somebody to come in in the evenings and just keep an, keep an eye on things. Um, they it was you know second shift support, so taking mm -hmm. calls and things like that. Um, and uh, I I was part time while I was finishing up school, and then I finished up school and they put me full time, and I was working there. You know, sec the only only second shift person in the entire company. Um, and since I had sem semi amount of free time. Uh, they would hand me, you know, odds and ends projects. Yep. And I think I was the 43rd employee at that point. Uh -huh. um, and my CTO came to me and he said, um, hey, I've got a, a new project. Um, I know you've got some free time. So here's, uh, we had, you know, we created this report. It was just a, a CSV generation of our accounts and some of the actions and transactions and volumes that they're doing. Um, I just want to throw this at you and see if you can find any trends. Um, so I, I was, I've always been into puzzles, even though I have an art degree and I've always been yeah. like the math and science guy in school. And, um, I did take some, I did take CS 101 and C plus plus just for the fun of it. Um, and, uh, the data that they gave me was, um, not very useful. <laughs> so it's surprising. Uh, surprising. <laughs> yeah. Here's, here's one day's worth of data for each account and try and find a trend and all of their systems are not interrelated. So uh, yeah, not going to be any trends in there. Yeah, big, big accounts are bigger. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. 
Um, so I uh, started Googling and found Tableau and downloaded a trial. And uh, because we were so small and didn't have any accurate tools, all of our support people had direct, ac direct access to a read version of the database. Uh -huh. um, so I was, you know, didn't know CQ SQL when I started. So, you know, kind of played around with that, downloaded a Tableau trial, um, got some meaningful data, uh -huh. um, and was able to actually like grab some stuff and say, here's some trends. Um, ended up deadlocking the database in the process because <laughs> I was new, <laughs> had no idea what and, I was doing. And using Tableau, it's the like, it's right. the ultimate, uh, let me, let me pull everything, um, <laughs> run this big query. <laughs> yep. Just do was, a couple level of detail expressions right. uh, on a custom SQL. Uh, right. yeah, I got it. It was great. <laughs> um, but they were, they were really happy. Um, and they, they kept giving me more questions. Um, and I kept giving them more answers. And so then they gave me a, a tentative position shift, um, kept rolling with that. Um, and so now I'm, that's what, that's what my title is. I got, you know, several promotions later. That's and, awesome. So uh, you, Tableau mean, you, server later. You like truly, uh, kind of organically evolved from, uh, yeah. within the same company, um, through different roles. Yeah. That's really cool. I mean, I've, I've heard, you know, my own experiences, I, I started, I did like operations for a small uh, nonprofit and it was like, okay, I had all these tasks and I just had to start managing data to accomplish right. the tasks, like make sure that everyone is like checklists. Right. But then it's like, okay, yep. well this, this can't be the best way to do a checklist. So you move to forms and then you like, right. Okay, well let me get a database. And then it's like, oh, so before you know it, you're building a web application to, uh, you know, to monitor all this stuff. And it's kind of nice too, because it, it, everything that I'm working on and have worked on origin like was organic and derived from answering some sort of business question. Yep. Um, so it's, you know, having direct value towards the business and assisting business users and making sure that what I'm working on is impactful has been like kind of at the heart of what I'm working on. So I think that's, that's been a big boon. Yeah. What have me. you found that's, um, you know, as you've grown, what's been, some of the keys or th some of the insights you've had into how to make things resonate for, for business users? Um, key insights. So the biggest piece is um, on, a, on, a, on a personal level, you have to have empathy mm -hmm. because of most of the time the business user doesn't know what they're asking for. Yep. And the question that they present to you oftentimes is not the question that they're trying to answer. So you have to have enough empathy to work with them and circle around on that and like drill into what's the heart of the problem that they're trying to solve instead of the, the face value question that they're asking. Yep. Um, and then having the ability and, and within the company <clears throat> as somebody who's solo, like I am to know who to go talk to, to help me answer those, those questions once I have them, because I don't know everything. Yep. So, I, when this section of the product and this small section of the database for this, um, the data that I haven't analyzed before to answer this new question, I need to be able to reach out to those people and, and remove those blockers for myself yeah. um, to get what I need. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I'm sure that comes kind of natural because you've had to learn everything as you go. So it's not like you, you wouldn't be mm -hmm. here if you weren't able to do that. Um, right. Are there from a learning perspective and like, you know, learning Tableau and learning uh, SQL and learning uh, databases, how, um, how do you, have you found anything that's surprised you or like, has anything been any practice that you've taken up been particularly helpful um, courses or interviews with people or um, anything like that? Um. Because some of those skills, especially like Tableau and SQL, you can take a course and learn the basics, but um, I feel like there's a lot of art to it as well. Um, I feel like, you know, the visual side was, wasn't too hard for me. Um, I think the biggest part was having people around me who were willing to answer questions mm -hmm. um, and willing to point things out. Um, 
you know, having coworkers who didn't have a problem when I said, you know, would come up with, you know, having to learn how joins work on the fly in the office because yeah. I just didn't know. Um, and extensive Googling, <laughs> lots and lots <laughs> of Googling. I mean, that's kind of just the heart of, of everything. And also having leadership and management that has allowed me the time to figure things out. That's been, that's been key too, because they understand that I, they're, they're giving me the, that opportunity instead of expecting, you know, yeah. I need this yeah. now. That's interesting. Did they, uh, did they kind of start with a directive or um, a scope? Have they provided much guidance or have you also been kind of directing the path of, I think this would be a valuable data set to explore, a, a question to ask? Um, it's mostly directed by all the business users questions that I have. Um, you know, so I, I report to our VP of product and I'm within the product sphere. Um, and, but I, you know, I get questions from our customer success people, our, our new implementation and, and the operations side, um, support our support teams. Um, I basically billings, like I basically just don't, the only thing I don't touch is sales at this point. Yeah. Um, and so a lot of the time that I spend is chasing down the questions that they have. Um, and then in my off time or on, you know, on a slow week, I'll, you know, try and, you know, find something interesting that I find interesting and go chase that down and try and figure that out. Right. Um, you know, and you know, when I can, it's, you know, okay, well I, we, since we do a lot of text messages, SMS emails and stuff like that too. So I've had a couple projects where it's like, all right, let me go explore NLTK and figure out, you know, what I can pull out of all these, yeah, you know, unscripted messages that are going back and forth and, you know, trying to do some text analysis with that. And the original project that I had with that, um, we had just gone through, uh, you know, an agile training company wide, at least on the engineering and product side. Um, and so then I had, I was able to do some pair programming and picked up a lot of Python skills that way. Uh -huh. Um, with somebody who was really experienced. Um, yeah, it's been a lot. It's been like, Everything that I can get and pull in, I mean, I, I started going to, um, I went to one meeting of the, uh, I think it's um, Anthony Antonianson. What is that his name? Yeah, yeah. Alex. Alex. Alex Antonianson. Yeah. So I went to one of those meetings and, you know, found you guys, Penny, you through that. Um, I've been lurking here for a while. <laughs> and uh, we, 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 the company just recently switched to Slack. So now I'm on Slack all day. So oh, yeah, that makes that that makes it a lot easier to kind of yeah. Stay so now I'm on Penny U all day too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's um, it's interesting. They, I feel like early on I was um, you know, heavily focused on on that skill building and like every new excited to take on every new project. But then as yeah. I've gone, as I've grown in my career, especially, it's like now I'm thinking of what is the platform that I want to build and invest in versus like the, the question or the solution. Um, Cause you know what, this discussion is just reminding me of like, even two or three years ago, it all, I'd always be thinking about a, a question, uh, like in a project really. But now I'm very much thinking of like, okay, how do we make this platform useful so that we can ask a bunch of, so that I can hire someone like you <laughs> and, See, and yeah. like give them free reign to go do the analytics. I'm a little bit in that realm too. So I'm, I've, you know, I, when we were looking at doing Tableau server, cause I, I had a desktop license at that yeah, point, right. it was just spl splitting things out. And so I was in charge of running through all the demos with all of the potential vendors, even for that first round when we brought Tableau server on. Um, and I'm doing that again now um, uh, for the embedded analytics platform that we're looking to put into our, our system. Um, and that's why we, I asked you for the conversation about Looker that we had yeah. a couple yeah. weeks ago. Um, and that's something that I'm beginning to, to look at. Um, we're probably going to be hiring a data engineer uh, sometime nice. this year. There's a little bit up in the air with Corona and everything. But yeah, so we're slowly looking at building that out, um, which is, it's been an interesting shift in, in thought. Yeah, because you got to start thinking for like, okay, what's this guy's going to, this guy or girl's experience going to be? Right. Uh, when they come in, are they just right. going to have like this tangle of pipelines and uh, or dashboards or 
what? And I don't even know what that looks like because I, I don't have an experience there. And that's going to be like the next hurdle that we have to overcome. Yeah. And this is what's hard. Like, I think this is a, the hard part about being like the data person is you don't have that guidance, um, especially when like right. I'm still growing a lot. And like, I wish I yeah. had someone more senior saying, uh, me too. This is, <laughs> hey, this is what you need to think about. This is what you need to do first, second, third, you know, like, hey. Right. Uh, so it's, it is a challenge. Um, and then there's the, 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 the give and take of the ownership of all of the success. Yeah. Um, and the struggle that comes with that um, versus having a, a little more direct guidance and a, a clearer path that you, that you can take. Right. Um, it's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's messy. It's messy. Yeah, it's right? messy. That's, that's exactly that's what it a, is. That's the startup. I mean, that's the startup world. It's like, if you, you gotta right. be able to deal with uncertainty, you gotta be able to deal with like 80% optimization. Um, like you're not going to get, just keep going. Gonna be, uh, yeah. a high performance machine. It's going to be a, um, a jalopy that gets you across the country, you know, it's, like, <laughs> it's going to get you there, but yeah. it's not going to be the best that you could do. Uh, yeah. The, the, that's, that's cool. Um, so question for you, how, yeah. how does um, Bachelor of Fine Arts in oil painting play into your, your work? What, um, and I mean that, I mean that broadly, like your art right. background. Um, I think the heaviest side is visual communication. Um, and, you know, as somebody who builds visual represent representations of data, um, it's important to understand how much information people can deal with, um, how colors work, um, understanding when somebody looks at something, how the eye travels when they're looking at it, um, and how to, to lay out information in a way that is helpful. Um, not necessarily meaningful or impactful directly, but in, in indirectly helpful. Yeah. Um, and the biggest thing that my degree helped me with in life in general um, is it was my sophomore year. I had a painting that I was working on. Actually, I think you might be able to see it in the corner there. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. The it was it's a still life of rocks. Um, and we had to, you know, just, just paint the rocks, right? It's just basic. <laughs> look, look at the rocks, paint the rocks. <laughs> um, and I, I struggled so hard. Um, and I was, I, I tried one, one technique and my professor was like, no, 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 that's, that's not working for you. Try a different technique. Um, and I kept switching it up and it's like, all right, we'll use blue in the shadows and you can see it ended up like all kinds of blue. Mm -hmm. um, and I spent a lot of time and the most of my time in class just kind of like looking at the canvas and looking at the still life and not doing anything because I didn't know where to go. And I didn't know what to do next. Yeah. Um, and so I wasted a whole bunch of time and I realized like I had a, a major epiphany that the fear of messing up and doing the wrong thing and the immobilization from that is worse than getting it wrong. Yeah. So I, I was much more fearless after that. And it's like, it's okay to mess up. Um, things are going to be wrong. You have to own those mistakes, um, right. but just keep plowing forward. And I think that's been extremely helpful for me because as somebody who doesn't know what they're doing or hasn't known what they were doing, <laughs> I, I'm going to make mistakes and I'm going to mess it up and I'm going to give you the wrong numbers. Um, and some things are going to look bad but you have to own those and say, oh, as soon as you catch it, you have to say, I messed up, here's where I messed up. This is, this is what's real and this is why this you know, set of numbers over here is real. And I think I that's love, really important for people. I really love that. Um, and I can imagine it's very, um, it's very tangible when you're, that like ownership it's in front is of you. tangible when you're, when you're painting. It's in front it's of like, you. It's There's the no canvas. dependency that's causing no. this mistake. There's no like wind, <laughs> you know? It's in your face. It's literally in your face. <laughs> so I, hadn't, I hadn't been aware of that piece of myself until that point. Huh. It was a wake up call. 
Wow. Yeah. So how do you yeah. handle that? Like when you're painting and you make a mistake, what do you, what, I'm sure there's like an, I, I know when I do it, it's like, I know there's an emotional like response. Yeah. Like, yeah, oh, yeah. No. <laughs> and then you shame yourself and then you have to deal with that. Um, you keep going and you, you have to allow yourself and give yourself that freedom. Yeah. Because if you don't, then you're, you're paralyzed. So you, you have to realize that, you know, they're not mistakes. They're just happy accidents. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Awesome. And, cool. and it's, we're not used to thinking about like, uh, you know, missing a comma in a script as a right. happy accident, but, uh, right. but maybe a different a context, you know? Yeah. And, and I think those small level mistakes, um, aren't necessarily mistakes. They're just the, the difficulty of doing the thing. Mm. You know, I think maybe, uh, not being aware of the, the best, you know, package to use or having really bad color choice in a visualization that you're doing or, um, giving a bad presentation, right. Um, at the end. Um, I think those are where the mistakes can come in, but those are also where the biggest learning points come in. Hmm. You know, cause then you, you figure out if you, especially if you can get feedback and that's the, the big part. Yeah. Um, this is how you can, that's how you grow. Yeah. Right. You know, cause, Oh, I didn't know that, you know, I, I shouldn't be writing all these by hand and that pandas can help me a whole bunch yeah. or, you know, um, here's some, techniques on giving presentations yeah um yeah that's i mean that's i i just really love that uh visual um and and i'm gonna use that forever now so <laughs> thank you for that the You're welcome so, okay so talk to me about feedback and what feedback is most useful um for a growing you know a growing analyst how do you do you have to find a person do you have to get them to look at the thing what what is the way how do you get feedback and make sure that you're kind of completing that loop so uh, there's a couple different sections of that and some of those are from certain business users um and especially within the company i've found um, a handful of people that because not everybody's going to look at the things all the time or tell you what's bad about them but there's going to be a handful of people that are going to be your best friends and your best critics yeah. Um, and they're the ones that are going to say, well, why can't it do that? Um, oh, I didn't think of that. Let me go put that feature into this dashboard. Um, let me just tweak this a little bit so it works for you better because I didn't see your perspective or build, build your perspective into it when I was first making it. Yeah. Um, and then the same thing with, you know, how you're writing queries. I don't know. I've got a, another friend um, that I've made who's on the engineering side and you know, we, we converse a lot at work or over Slack and I can poke him and say, Hey, here's this query I wrote, or here's this, you know, bit of code that I wrote in Python, you know, what's, how can it be better? Right. Um, and I've also started, um, a learning group outside of work with a couple of coworkers, uh, with a bunch of developers. So I'm the least smart person in the room too. Uh, and that's been really nice because I get to pick their brains and we kind of share, you know, information and ideas and that's been fun too. Yeah. So that's great. <clears throat> I think, you know, I've, I've got a couple of people in mind who about that, you know, best friend, worst critic, uh, right. you know, type of type of dynamic. And it's, it is, it's extremely useful. It's always better. I'm always better off after having had a conversation, even though sometimes I'm like, I don't want to have this conversation. And that's part of it too. Cause like, you know, especially with art that's at the end of every painting, you put it in front of everybody and they get to tell you what they like and don't like about it. Yeah. Um, and so handling criticism has also been much easier because of that. Now, is um, that how it works? Like you, you put it in front of someone and they, they say the entire class, the entire class and the yeah. entire class tells you what they like and didn't like about it. And you can't and the, change it. <laughs> no, it's done. I mean, you can change it after the fact, but you get the grade right there. Yeah. Huh. Oh man. Uh, maybe we should do that more. Have some, have some, just display your, your visualization and everyone says, uh, you know, what's good, what's bad. I think that would be, I mean, especially for, especially for visualizations, if there was a, a section of the community that would allow for that open critique and a safe space, you know, hot buzzword, but um, I think that would be awesome, actually, because um, that's how you get better. 
especially with visual stuff. Yeah, because and right now, like I've I've been thinking a lot about the visual stuff because we're in kind of this kind of this novel global exploratory data analysis mm -hmm. phase right now with the coronavirus. It's like you see all these maps coming out, and like half the time I'm like, this map is terrible. It's showing China right. as one big bubble, and really it's like you know one region in China. Um, and well, and how how especially with data, how the data behind the visualization reads is one aspect, and then how it just looks and stands on its own legs as a visual piece of yes. something are, are separate but connected. Yes. Um, this is a leading question, but does it drive you crazy when there's, when you see all these dashboards and it's like black with like bright red, like, you know, one, 10,000 fatalities. And like, you know, it's just like, I don't know. It's like, it's scary. You know, just seeing some of this stuff is, is scary. And everything Maybe clips perfect, but. and yeah. Uh, I, I, I'm still processing, <laughs> to be honest. I don't yeah. think I have a, I don't know how I feel about it. And I don't think I can say what's good or bad. I, I know it, you know, it, it freaks me out. Um, and I think it, there's one piece of visualization that, what's the, the what's the author's intent? Yes. Um, what are they, trying to make me believe on the way that they're conveying this information. Yes. Yes. And that's something that is hard to read into sometimes. I think that's, I think that's what my sense is, is I think there's a lot of people right now. Um, and I don't know what the final, what the message is, uh, right. because, and there's a lot of different messages going around right now. Yes. And, and some messages are, this is the end times. And some messages are, um, uh, we can do something about this. We can flatten the curve. Yeah. Or we can do, like the flatten yeah. the curve is like, that is a, a visual, like conceptually, that is very powerful. But just there is a curve that has people dying is, a, it could be the same data, but it's a totally different message. Yeah. Um, and it's, yeah. I mean, it's really, it's really tough. And it's interesting how, you know, you, you especially brought up, you know, black with big red, neon red, and the way the color behind that makes you feel and read something different. Yes. Versus if it was soft white with a warm yellow, you know, whatever. Yeah. Right. Right. Um, hmm. Well, this is fast. This has been fascinating. It's nine thirty. Is there anything else you want to kind of like any final thoughts you want to leave people with? Um. Yeah. Just don't be afraid to fail. Yep. Love it. Uh, All right. Thanks, man. This is good. Right, thank you. This is uh this has been really great.